Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. History Dose. Preemptive Light, good channel. The first gun ever. All right, I, I thought that the, the Chinese invented gunpowder, but didn't really use it for military use, so I guess I'm wrong. And let's see. My name's Connor, if you're new. Hi. Uh, original link, top description, Discord, all that stuff. Click on it. Over a thousand years ago, this silk banner was painted and displayed in a Chinese cave. It depicts the demon Mara unleashing an army of monsters to stop the Buddha from achieving enlightenment. But what's really interesting about this painting is over here. This demon wields a fire lance, a kind of flamethrower that is the likely ancestor of every gun and cannon ever created. The banner is the oldest known depiction of a gunpowder weapon in the world. More than a hundred years before this was painted, Taoist monks were trying to create an elixir that extended human life. In the records, they cautioned against making a particular mixture that had... Right, because like, how, how, like, what are the chances you, you stumble upon the right ingredients to make this? And so, pretty smart, or lucky, or... I know a lot of inventions are made out of mistakes, and so... Uh, extended human life. In the records, they cautioned against making a particular mixture that had singed their beards and burned down workshops. In mixing saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal, the Taoists had accidentally created gunpowder. The mixture burned extremely quickly and generated a large volume of hot gas in the process. It wasn't long before Chinese militaries learned that if you put that gas in a confined space, it would force its way out with an explosion. Historian Peter Lorge writes, Gunpowder and the gun were invented in China, and while knowledge of the former may have come about accidentally, the latter was unequivocally a weapon of war. Uh, okay, in 1132, I, during I China's wrong. Jinsong Wars, a rebellion cropped up around the Song. Okay, I, I was wrong. I did not know that. In 1132, during China's Jinsong Wars, a rebellion cropped up around the Song Dynasty city of Dayan. The governor Chen Gui watched as 10,000 rebels surrounded his city walls and mounted a siege. For 70 days, the rebels pummeled the city with catapult fire, injuring Chen's foot and leaving the city's people starving and hopeless. Until, finally, the rebel commander sent a peace offering. He would lift the siege if Chen Gui sent him a concubine, but Chen sensed desperation in the enemy camp and rejected their offer. He ordered his soldiers to jury rig over 20 fire lances. Seems like a strange request. You'd think he'd be able to get as many concubines he wants himself. And just like a random, just a... They sent him a concubine. Ordered his soldiers to jury rig over 20 fire lances. These were gunpowder filled okay. bamboo tubes attached to spears. There was no projectile. Rather, they launched a searing jet of flames that lasted for about five minutes. The rebels sent women and children to fill Chen's moats with straw and mud then pulled a fleet of mobile siege towers called Sky Bridges to Dion's walls. Chen quickly deployed his fire lancers, who shot flames at the Sky Bridge porters. The enemy frantically pulled the towers back, where they became stuck in the poorly filled moats. I, the first time I had seen this, and the only time I had seen it for many years, was in Lord of the Rings Return of the King, in the, uh, the main battle scene. And I thought that it was just like a Tolkien creation or maybe a creation of uh peter jackson or, or something like that and, and it's so cool looking at history videos and finding that these are actually very common in sieges uh throughout history the defenders capitalized firing arrows hurling bombs and unleashing fire oxen animals made to carry delayed action gunpowder bombs on their backsides the sky bridges crumbled in flames and the rebels retreated the city of Dayan Kamikaze cows on was free again. From there, the Fire Lance was well on its way to becoming a true gun. A look through the records tells us that militaries began to see gunpowder's potential to launch projectiles. Troops began loading bamboo barrels with metal bits and shards of pottery. Some variations also fired arrows. The problem was that if troops wanted to shoot someone very far away, they needed a more powerful gunpowder explosion which required a stronger barrel, 
bamboo wasn't going to cut it. Records possibly as old as the early 1200s mention a three-foot iron gun people used to shoot bullets at bandits hundreds of feet away. It's impossible to say exactly when the first true single projectile metal gun was invented, but historians agree that it happened sometime in the 13th century. From there, we see the rise of true firearms, from the godfather of handguns, the hand cannon, to modified fire lances that fired a lead bullet and spit poison flames. It seems safe to assume that these early gunpowder weapons immediately changed the face of war, but that's not true. The nature of Chinese warfare left little room for early firearms. Threats to Chinese power often came from nomadic steppe armies uh. like the Mongols, who relied heavily on true. The nature of Chinese warfare left What was my question? I had a question. I, I immediately changed the face of war, but that's not true. The nature of Chinese warfare left little room for early firearms. Threats to Chinese power often came from nomadic steppe armies like the Mongols. I have to stop trying to think of it. It's lost, okay? I need, it's, it's keeping me from paying attention. I'm going back five seconds. I'm sorry. All right, we're going. Threats to Chinese power often came from nomadic steppe armies like the Mongols, who relied heavily on elite horse archers. Clunky, inaccurate gunpowder weapons that took minutes to reload were effectively useless against a flurry of arrows from stampeding Mongols. Instead, gunpowder weapons were best used in more secure circumstances, where their slow rate of fire didn't matter as much. The first of these circumstances was the siege. However, most armies still opted to try to scale the walls instead of destroying them, as Chinese city walls were usually too thick for early cannon fire to break through. Gunpowder weapons were mainly used in sieges by defending armies to keep enemies out. The second environment where early firearms found use was naval warfare. The Song Dynasty's navy often set enemy ships ablaze with gunpowder-enhanced projectiles. But their strong navy only held out for so long against the Mongol hordes. Kublai Khan and the Mongols crushed the last of the Song in 1279 and established the Yuan Dynasty in China. The Mongol war machine adopted Chinese gunpowder technology. This Japanese scroll shows samurai retreating as Mongols shoot arrows and throw gunpowder bombs. The scroll shows samurai retreating as Mongols shoot arrows and throw gunpowder bombs at them. The Mongols also used hand cannons during the Battle of Tsushima in 1274. While the Mongols... That's literally... I can use that term. It applies. A hand... Can't, like, it looks like... It doesn't look like a gun. It looks like a cannon barrel. Just for the hand. That sounded stupid. You know what I mean? It, nah. Couldn't take Japan, they took yeah. virtually everything else. They toppled kingdom after kingdom, creating an empire that stretched from Korea to Hungary. In the process, they helped spread knowledge of gunpowder to the rest of the world. The Middle East had fire lances by 1280, and cannons appeared in Europe by the 1300s. In European warfare, gunpowder showed wait, 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 what? to the rest of the world by the 1300s. Had fire lances by 1280. 12 AD. What? Is he saying 1280? Knowledge of gunpowder appeared in Europe of the world. The Middle East had fire lances by 1280 and can Okay, sorry. It sounded like 12 AD. Uh, 1280. Obviously, it has to be. Cannons appeared in Europe by the 1300s. In European warfare, gunpowder showed more promise. Early guns could be used effectively against infantry, and castle walls were generally brittle enough to break with cannon fire. By the early 1400s, Joan of Arc was expertly using artillery to fight the English. The newfound effectiveness of the firearm in Europe and the Middle East helped drive innovation. Trigger firing mechanisms, improvements in accuracy, and breech loading would gradually make guns effective on virtually any battlefield across the world. The role of China in the firearm revolution is often ignored. 
While guns may have taken off in Europe and the Middle East, the firearm is a Chinese invention, and for better or worse, one of the most impactful inventions in human history. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, consider donating to our Patreon account. I like that music. Uh, cool. Interesting, I learned something. Dispensed of a previous incorrect belief. What learning is all about, usually. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you enjoyed that or can teach me. That I'm sure I had questions or something. Anyways, recommendation, whatever. I'd uh, love for you to join the Discord. Uh, see you guys next time. All right.